you've had a very long career. You've covered many wars. You've been in the middle of a lot of conflicts. Um, but how does this one compare to what you've covered in the past? Israel occupies a unique place uh, on the planet. The existential threat is unlike any other conflict situation. The taking, stealing of mass uh, hostages, specifically American ones as well, is something we've never handled before in this conflict this is a very bizarre situation uh and you add to that what happened to the people in this terrorist attack depending on how you want to define it and i've never seen anything like that. do you ever feel for, fear for your life no i'm not a hero i'm not a uh, cowboy i'm not a soldier this is no place for people who are seeking glory so you just keep the risk low the stories are basically obvious. The realities are usually obvious. And you try to make it as not dangerous as possible. So how do you and your team stay safe? Every possible way that you can. Okay. Uh, you, you try, if you can, like if the American military is involved, obviously you try to stay close to they are. You try to pay attention to where the conflicts are and uh, how you get in and how you get out and where you stay and what you do within conflict and how you regard instructions. You know, you try not to ask for trouble. You try not to go to places where you know it's easier to be taken. Uh, you try to not make yourself vulnerable. You know, a lot of this is just common sense being reasonable and depending on the instincts that you develop over many years of uh, putting yourself in bad situations and knowing what has worked and what hasn't in the past. You are a journalist. It is your job to be the eyes and ears for us who are not there, but you're also a person. You have a heart. And we've seen um, a number of reporters get emotional. We just saw a BBC reporter break down at a hospital the other day. You're a dad, you're a husband, you're a father, you know, all of those things. So how do you keep it together? But it's helpful to divorce your humanity from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the line's pretty obvious. I mean, Michelle, you've been doing this to the high level for a long time. It's not about you, but you are the proxy for your audience. And certain things are overwhelming. I don't think it's so much a matter of holding back on your humanity as it is reining in your own uh, opinions and feelings about mm -hmm. I think that's more uh, a balancing test on the job than dealing with emotion, the interconnectedness and interdependence of people and the connection of their uh, emotions to a story that this is, you know, your fill in the blank, brother, sister, mother, father, whatever, your child. I think that's an asset to your reporting. I think a feeling is an asset. I think as a human being, uh, there is a tendency to close yourself off uh, in relationships and dynamics. And I don't know that that is ever a benefit to anyone in your life, let alone to your audience. We talk a lot nowadays about mental health and about keeping ourselves, um, you know, in our best, uh, being our best selves. And I just remember, I remember when I was covering Katrina and how it, it sat with me so much. And I remember just standing in the shower after maybe a week and a half of being on the ground and just taking a sh shower for the first time and just crying and letting it all out. How do you keep going so it doesn't sit with you? So that doesn't start to to weigh on you because covering this day in and day out Chris I know it it can be heavy it can be a burden um oof. I don't think uh well, I don't know I mean, look everybody's different Michelle there's no question that I have never been able to wash it off uh, I think that it is uh haunting I think that it changes you I think that it compromises you. I think it makes it harder for you in your personal life and your relationships. I think that uh, it has changed my ability to process uh, emotion and trauma and that things that should be upsetting sometimes aren't. And sometimes things that shouldn't be too upsetting are. Uh, I have been diagnosed with PTS in the past. You have to work on it. And I think that so much of what we see in these situations is inhuman. And there's a wickedness and a darkness. And I think that it can often be absorbed.
mm-hmm. and I hide from that reality doesn't do anybody any service and you're really just not being honest yeah. so I don't think I do wash it off I don't think I do get away from it I, I think it's haunting and you know the guy who's uh, shooting this right now who's my producer and I think technically at News Nation my boss he's got like all these titles now <laughs> Bartley and I have been all over the world together and often as an inside joke when we're around traumatic things, we'll look at each other and be, you know, look at each other and kind of go like, you know, la, 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 la. Well, I'm glad I'm not there. I'm mm-hmm. glad I'm glad I'm not having to see mm-hmm. this firsthand. Um, and because we both know that it is real. And, you know, I think that that is part of what you got to give in this job. You know, yeah. you've got to give in this job in order to connect people to it. And there is a price to be paid. And often we think in our heads that the only price is that somebody's gonna hurt me. Somebody's gonna take me, shoot me, blow me up, whatever whatever it is. It's inhuman stuff that you see. Mm-hmm. And it stays with you. And I think that price, I think that's the price. Your family has seen you do so much. Do you have a directive to say to them, like, maybe don't watch this? Or do you say to them, yeah, you know, yeah, I want you guys to be connected to, to what's happening and what I'm doing? You know, Michelle, you've known me a long time. Uh, I have put my family through things that I never anticipated, you know, with what I've been through recently. Mm-hmm. I, I had no idea how much of a burden my family was carrying, my kids were carrying. It's the only part of the dynamic that really pains me and I wish I could do differently and do over. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm very aware of that. So what I do is my life, my personal life has very little to do with what I do professionally. And uh, look, when you go to a war zone, everybody's worried about you. And I try to reach out and I reach out to them in a very uh, obvious day-to-day quotidian way, you know, I'm talking to them about their stuff, what's going on, and reassuring them that we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Um, but it's not easy. Mm-hmm. You know, this this job can suck. You know, <laughs> it can just suck because you're confronted by so many things that you can do so little about. Yeah. And the longer that I do it, you know, that reality becomes more and more raw for me that I've seen so much, I understand so much, but you can change so little. You know, it really is just uh, haunting. Have you been able to get any sleep? I mean, do, what what is your schedule when you're there? Uh, this, this is no good. You don't sleep a lot. You know, it's hard. Today we were in Jerusalem and thank God there wasn't a lot of really vicious conflict. You know, there was, there was some skirmishes going on there after the prayers, uh, but they lit garbage uh, bins on fire, like big ones. Mm-hmm. And it's just a wretched stench that gets all over you. And we're like spraying and bleach and stuff. And of course, this is nothing compared to so much of the suffering that's going on around you, right? Yeah. But you're never going to sleep. You're never going to sleep mm-hmm. after watching the Iron Dome operate and a Patriot missile take out some projectile mm-hmm. uh, and hearing the air raid sirens and remembering this kid telling you that her eyes were murdered by what Hamas did to her. And, you know, hearing what's the latest in Gaza and how desperate the people are there, you're not going to sleep. Yeah. You're not going to sleep. You're not going to sleep well. And that's the reality. What are we working on tonight? What are we going to see on News Nation tonight with you guys? I am very focused on bringing people the story of who's missing and, and trying to negotiate this space in America right now between understanding the suffering that is going on in Palestine and how wrong what Hamas did and that you can hold these two thoughts in your head at the same time that what's happening in Gaza with Palestinians is wrong and horrible and that in no way justified terrorism, the likes of which we saw here, which I got to tell you, Nichelle, I've been a lot of places. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of the worst of humanity. I've never seen anything more barbarous than what I've been seeing. And that's important and it matters. So tonight, I'm going to talk about what's happening in Gaza. 
Uh, we're going to have uh, people on. I'm going to show you what happened today. And, and, and fortunately, the skirmishes that broke out today, because there were big protests called, it wasn't that bad. What does that do to the timeline? What does that do to this balancing between trying to get the hostages and them rolling deep and hard into Gaza? That's what we'll be talking about tonight on News Nation.